I could not help but make the point that why we may not see eye to eye yet on pedo baptism and pedo communion, we have full agreement on pedo hand raising. We had a very good time this past week. Pastor James White came to town here in Moscow. He preached at Christ Church. We had a good number of meals. And to top everything off, he let a host of folks out here look straight at the sun through his solar scope. No, that is not a metaphor about Dr. White's keen biblical analysis. He does have such keen biblical analysis, and he also has a solar scope, tripod and all, through which we took a look at the sun as it blazed in the Idaho sky. It was loads of fun, and so was the debate between James and Doug on Pado communion. The debate was quite friendly, as it ought to have been. In fact, the brotherly nature of the debate struck me as the most significant thing about it. Plenty of folks out there have gotten quite sour and sassy with Dr. White, and there are, of course, several who regularly find their knickers in a twist about the ministry here in Moscow. Essentially, cranky Calvinists everywhere have a lesson to learn from White and Wilson. Beyond this initial lesson on how to be a good Christian while disagreeing, the debate helped clarify a key issue. In so doing, the debate moved the ball down the court a bit. The key issue came about toward the end of our time of Q&A, and I'd like to highlight it for those interested in the topic. I will point to a few resources at the end that I have benefited from. During Q&A, Wilson and White both affirm that the sacraments are for members of the New Covenant. They agree on this point. They disagree about the membership of the New Covenant. So if you ask both men, should members of the New Covenant be baptized and come to the table? They would answer in the affirmative. And if you follow up that question with, and who are the members of the New Covenant? Dr. White would answer, the elect. And Pastor Wilson would answer, believers and their children. If you're new to the topic under discussion, then you should know that several Pado baptists agree with Wilson on the latter point, the membership of the New Covenant, but disagree with both Wilson and White on the first point, the sacraments, both of them that is, are for members of the New Covenant. The Orthodox Presbyterian Church considered Pado communion back in 1987, and a majority of the OPC committee that reviewed the matter that year were in favor of Pado communion. For those of you who want to take a deep dive into their findings, you can find a link to that report in the description below. Many of you know that I was a Reformed Baptist minister before coming to the conviction that not only those who profess faith, but also the children of believing parents should be baptized. And that baptism conviction is downstream from one's understanding of New Covenant membership. The Pado baptist position generally holds that God has made one covenant of grace with differing administrations. The covenant God made with Abraham in Genesis 12, 15, and 17 was an administration of the covenant of grace. And Abraham's seed were members with him in that administration of the covenant of grace. Moreover, the new covenant is also an administration of that one same covenant of grace. And being that it is but one covenant of grace with differing administrations, old and new, then the children's inclusion in the covenant of grace remains into the new administration. Reformed Baptists have taken slightly different approaches amongst themselves, but several Reformed Baptists as of late hold that the Abrahamic covenant is not an administration of the covenant of grace. They hold that Abraham's seed were indeed members of the Abrahamic covenant, evidenced by them having the sign of the covenant, circumcision. But they do not hold that the Abrahamic covenant was an administration of the covenant of grace. They hold that the Abrahamic covenant was a shadow of the covenant of grace rather than an administration of it. At this point, you may simply have more questions. So hopefully the resource list consisting of both credo and pedo sources will be beneficial. You at least have the key issue in view, seeing generally where the agreement and disagreement lies. However the ball is moved down the court on this issue, we should all thank God for His grace evidenced in Pastor White and Pastor Wilson. One of my favorite moments in the debate was hearing Pastor White refer to little children at Apologia Church raising their hands in doxology during Sunday worship, to which Pastor Wilson said the same occurs at Christ Church here in Moscow. I could not help but make the point that why we may not see eye to eye yet on pedo baptism and pedo communion, we have full agreement on pedo hand raising. And thanks be to God. Now here is a list for those who want to get down to it. By way of debates, I would recommend two. First, an infant baptism debate between James White and Greg Strawbridge. Second, an infant baptism debate between Robert Strimple and Fred Malone. For modern work, see O. Palmer Robertson's Christ of the Covenants. That's a pedo work. 
and Greg Nichols, Covenant Theology, A Reformed and Baptistic Perspective on God's Covenants. That, of course, is a credo work. Samuel Renahan has written The Mystery of Christ, His Covenant, and His Kingdom, as well as a dissertation on the subject called From Shadow to Substance. Both of those are credo works. A couple more modern works worth your time would be Richard Belcher's The Fulfillment of God's Promises, that's Pado, and Pascal Deneau's Distinctives of Baptist Covenant Theology, that's Credo. For a systematic treatment of covenant with some fascinating worldview implications, see the section on covenant in Volume 3 of Bovink's Reformed Dogmatics, that of course is a Pado work. And if you are interested in older works, you may enjoy Nehemiah Cox. Covenant Theology from Adam to Christ, a credo work. Heinrich Bullinger's A Brief Exposition of the One and Eternal Testament or Covenant of God, that's Pado. And John Ball's A Treatise of the Covenant of Grace, that's also Pado. Links to all of these works, including that OPC report, can be found in the description below. Happy reading. Before I go, I want to tell you about a new documentary coming to Canon Plus. It's called Eve in Exile, and it comes out on May 6th. Even Exile is a movie about how Christian women can embrace their calling. And if they want to embrace their calling, it's important to know what that calling is. Even Exile will show you where things went wrong. Then it will point you toward the surprising path back to the garden. Don't watch and sulk about how far you or others have strayed. Watch and get going down the path of faith, work, fruit, and glory. So check out Eve in Exile, May 6th, only on Canon Plus. Here's a quick look. What does it mean to be a woman? Apparently nothing at all. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? I can't. So I'm not a biologist. Of- Our culture hates the idea of boundaries. My body, my <laughs> choice! We just want there to be no rules, no lines, no definitions. As a woman, what is that? Was to each their own. We're Christian women, and we want to live in the way God told us to but we're looking out over this current playing field and wondering where on earth we are supposed to stand. Our daughters are born into the ruins of what used to be a Christian nation, and we are raising them in the wreckage of the West. What does obedience look like in this madhouse? 